early enough, I got to understand that money is about exchange of value. So that if I create enough value, I will make enough money. So while my peers were busy pursuing after things that will not necessarily create value, I was busy pursuing things that will create value. Because I knew the more value I created, the more money I made. So for me, money is practically value. It's an exchange of value. And if people can start seeing money from that perspective, think uh, we have less of poor people and more of worthy people. What you need from a man that has money is not money. Or what he needs from you is just create a value. And you suddenly realize that the money you are supposed to beg for, it will give it to you and say thank you. Because you have solved the problem, you have created value for that person. And uh, when I talk to people about money, I don't stop uh, talking about how they can make money. People create value, they make money. But how many people have mastered the act of managing the money? How many people have mastered the act of multiplying the money they have made? I still taught somewhere on Sunday. It was a fairly large uh, place. And uh, before I started teaching, we started with playing a game, the darts game. And I used that to explain making money, managing money, uh, multiplying money, because this is very key. The subject of money has been so ignored by people. They love money, but what it takes to make money and multiply money, they've not really taken time to understand it very well. Because if you have created the value and the money has come, I've seen people that had money two, three years ago, and now they are going broke and you are wondering, what has gone wrong and uh, basic things like budgeting, planning their finances and knowing what funds are meant for the short, medium or long term and ensure that you allocate them appropriately and people, investments that um, people do not really look at. I told you how that we started with lands that cheap and um, some of those lands we sold 100,000 per plot came to us at like maybe 50, 65,000 per plot. Some of those plots are 600,000 now. So imagine if you invested 50,000 and you have plenty of those 50,000 50, that has turned 600,000. Can you imagine? People will say you have done money ritual. <laughs> but it's just foresight. Today we are in Badagri trying to push. Nobody is going there because they feel the road is bad. And we're investing now. The land is cheap. Nobody is coming. In the next five years, they would have completed our routines will be working. The land that we are begging people to buy for $2 million now will now be $10 They will say you have done money ritual. You have, the, the ritual you have done is understanding uh, these investment principles and just going after it. Most people will say, no, if I want to buy land, this lucky. I don't have a problem buying lucky. But make sure if you have $10 million naira, know the one that is for lucky out of it. Know the one that is for... Spread it. You know, these are basic things that people do not understand. And we caught early enough and we started doing that. We have proofs to show that, see how we did it, and if only we can do more. Uh, I'm interested to know that outside of pertinence, I have other businesses. I'm into agriculture under the company. I have a business, Global Real Limited, as a consultancy business because I consult for people. I mastered the act of drawing business plan, writing a business plan early enough in life. So even before I read startup business, I was doing that for a fee. People come to me, any area I can work a business plan for you with which you run your business. Later I started consulting for people. You don't need a certificate to be a consultant. You just need to have done something that people want to copy. So people come to me to ask for business advice. And of course, all of a sudden it's quite that there is counseling and there is consulting. So I separated it. When you come for counseling, I give you for free. When you are consulting, you pay a fee. You understand? And Gradually, so that went to me registering Global Real Limited. It's a company owned by me. I have Global Real Agricultural Services. I have a farm in Ogun State, over 20 acres, where we grow palm tree, we grow cocoa, we grow maize, we honey. I have an honey farm of like three acres where we produce honey also. Then also, I have another business not far from here. It's a supply chain business or a chain store shop at discount. We patterned after Walmart. We're just starting, but it's going to grow very big. If you're driving on that road, you see a very big uh, shop at discount, more like the shop rights, the what do you call it, uh, all other shop. The other. So we are just growing. It's new anyway, but 
is uh, going to grow bigger. So those are businesses because my own investment strategy is put 70% of your funds where your mouth is, where you can monitor. Put 30% with other people. So I have funds with other people, of course. In, in stocks, I do that. I invest in shares. I have insurance, um, products that I've bought into. I fix deposit. All other regular uh, money and capital market instrument. I do all of them. But my own investment strategy is put 70% of your money where your mouth is so that you are totally in control of whether it goes where it goes wrong. Put 30% with people, no problem. But I think people do it the other way around. They put 70% with people. And when things go wrong with those people, you are not there, you don't... It's what they told you you have invested in. So that's why if you have 10 million today, I won't tell you to give me more than 3 million to manage for you. Go and think of what you can do with your 7 million. Go and grow capacity to manage your 7 million. If that 7 million will go down, let it be that it was in your hand it went down. Not that you give to somebody and tomorrow they come and tell you some stories and you want it's personal anyway. I'm not saying everybody must follow that principle, but because you asked the question, I'm only trying to share. That, that's why I have businesses outside of pertinence because I would rather invest. Uh, up to now, I still have people I bought cars for, for Uber that make remittance. I just, I mean, I just um, at least I'm in control. This Uh, you see, when it comes to real estate business, the numbers can be very interesting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't result in profit. It's how you manage yeah, the numbers. Well, I can only say in the last um, four years, mm -hmm. our annual turnover has been in billions, not in millions. It may not be fixed, but uh, that's it. The turnover can look huge at most of the time because it's people's money. People buy land, 10 million. Your profit from that 10 million is maybe 500,000. Uh -huh. But when people hear that, you have sold land 10 million to 100 people. Just multiply that only. Yeah. It gives you an idea. That's almost 1 billion. You get what I'm saying? And that 1 billion has entered. But yeah. out of that 1 billion, you only maybe 50 million or less than. So the turnover can be huge in real estate. Yeah. And that's why real estate is good for cash flow. Yeah. So if you now manage it well. So most people go into real estate. They make this money, but they don't manage it well. So that's why we're talking about making, managing, and multiplying money. Very important. So for us, in a little way, we have been trying to manage we don't live a very large, um, I think we are very conservative. Yeah. I still live in, <coughs> yeah, no, no, very conservative. I still live in Idimu. Uh, the outside, it's just that part time, whatever I'm building, whatever I'm saying, ah, it has to be heaven. I'm in Idimu, but I think my house is far better than most people even live in Lake Yor. But in terms of the comfort I put around it, you understand? So if I don't want to be conservative, I would have moved to maybe Koyi long ago. But very soon I'm moving, so that you won't say I said that right, right. I'm moving because the guys around there are not just cooperating. You know? Oh God, I have not. Now listen to me. I just left the training now, and our facilitator was, he's a life coach, so he was teaching about 100% life improvement. Mm -hmm. So he started talking about different areas of life, and he gave us a particular chart with which you feel and, you know, rate yourself, and draw it was a practical class we had there and when it comes to fun and uh, unwinding I scored I scored very low and he was talking about how that man he enjoys his life that he goes to the cinema at least twice every week even if he will sleep there he doesn't mind that's already a part of it he goes to swim because ah when I when he rounded off and I came upstairs I told my guys they see me at the sofa <laughs> that my friend is enjoying me and suffering you know just being immersed. Um, when it comes to unwinding, like I told them down there that um, it's majorly at home and it shouldn't be like that. Every time I'm at home, I'm so happy. I'm so, people that are around me, they know my wife, my children, man. I don't joke with them. That's the best of my unwinding. And most times I get to rest when I'm out of the country. In three weeks from now, I'm out. And for like, I told my people for the first time, I'll stay six weeks out of this country. I've never done it. I'm not doing anything. I want to really, the rest, part of the, I want to do it this year. When I travel maximum three weeks, uh, two weeks, I'm back again. But this time I told them six weeks, anything that you guys want to do, six weeks once I go. So I don't really do much than relax with my family, watch um, TV, because some people say they unwind, they are reading. I, mean, I don't count it. That, that has been a part of me, but that's not unwinding. Unwinding, you should go out. Of course, I take my family out. It's almost like a, every Sunday thing after church. We just go to some places and like that.
But I think there is more fun that, to me, I just can't do a regular thing, of course, after church. If you are not going to church, you wouldn't have gone. You know that kind of, okay, let's go to shop, right? It's because you went to church. If you are not going to church, you wouldn't have gone there. So, uh, like when, talking, when they said he goes to the cinema twice, I, to me, cinema is like a special occasion. You know that kind of, <laughs> I don't just wake up and say, I'm going to the cinema. No, 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 maybe wedding anniversary, one day. Uh, it's not like my wife, well, yeah, let's go. So that's an area that I feel I also need to up my game just.